Hi everyone, this is Eric from Dumb Game Dev, and today we're going to look at um, creating opening and closing doors using the VRTK, that's the VR Toolkit for Unity, which works with Steam VR currently and uh, supposedly in the future soon with Oculus. So I'm not going to go over the VRTK itself as far as setting up the controllers and everything else, but we're going to look at using the door, how to set up the hinge, and what kind of scripts to use in the door to make it work with VRTK. Now if you jump over to the VRTK YouTube channel, you're going to see some tutorials about how to set up VRTK for the very first time and how to set up the controllers um, and the basic settings. So if we look at my VRTK controller here on the right controller, I'm just going to quickly show you which scripts I've got on it so that you can make sure you've got the same ones going on yours. Now I don't have any special settings on these, these are all actually pretty much the default settings. So we've got the VRTK controller action scripts, the VRTK controller event scripts, we have the VRTK uh, simple pointer which is going to be depreciated soon, but that just uh, is used to help us teleport around. And most importantly we have the VRTK interact touch and the VRTK interact grab. We're going to need these two to be able to grab the door and open and close them. So if you don't know how to set this up, jump over to the VRTK uh, YouTube channel and then follow their basic tutorial on getting set up for the first time. And once you've done that, make sure you add these two extra uh, scripts here, the VRTK Interact Touch and the VRTK Interact Grab to your controllers. Now, we're going to get into the meat of things here and look at getting a door here in this door frame that's going to open and close when we grab it. You can use any sort of door model you want. I mean, as long as it's going to fit in here, it's going to be nice and square. You could even set this up with a cube. And I've gone ahead uh, before this and just set up a basic door here. And this is just a single um, mesh. There's nothing uh, magical about it. It's actually a door from the asset store. And there's tons of different doors in the asset stores if you don't have any or you don't want to make your own. And I'm just going to line it up to the door frame by clicking the V key, holding down the V, and then clicking the corner and just dragging it into the door frame. So you might need to resize your door to make sure that it fits your door frame or your wall or whatever the case may be. I actually did that beforehand just to save a little bit of time. So, as you can see, the model's been scaled up to actually be 1.15 to fit into my door. The next thing you want to do is make sure that you have a box collider on this so that we can affect it with physics. Without a box collider, that's not going to happen. And I've made my box collider size slightly smaller than the door's uh, mesh render, so you can see this green line is inside the door. I found that my box collider is too big, the door's not going to open and close properly for me. So I've just brought it in slightly. The next thing we're going to do is add a component, and we need a rigid body component here so that we can apply some physics to this door. And the rigid body is going to add a mass to the door, and we're going to leave it as mass 1. We're going to add a little bit of drag, and we'll put angular drag, so that when we open and close this door, it doesn't fly open as easily as we uh, would want it, to, or, you know, we don't want it to flip open too easily. The next thing I want to do is remove gravity. You could have gravity on your door, um, but for my door, I don't want it to be affected by gravity, just the controller opening and closing it. Otherwise, it feels a little bit wonky. After the rigid body, we're going to have to add an actual hinge to this so that it knows where to rotate when we open and close it. Otherwise, it's just a uh, sitting here, sort of like a box that could be pushed over. So we're going to go add component and then say a hinge joint. So the hinge joint is going to allow it to swing open and close. And by default, the axis of the hinge joint is set on the x-axis, which means along the top here. So this door is going to open and close sort of like a doggy door. It'll swing open and close that way. And if we just move it around a little bit, you can see the arrow right here, right there, which is where it's going to uh, swing on the axis. Now, what I want to do is change the axis from the x-axis, so I'm going to set that as 0, and change it to the y-axis by hitting 1. So now if you see this arrow, you can see it's on the side of the door that we want to act as a hinge, just like a real door. And the y position no longer matters, so I mean we could move it up or down, but it's not going to matter uh, with this door. It won't affect how the door swings open and close. So I'm going to set it to 0 just for the sake of consistency. 
Now what can affect your door is your X anchor point here, I mean. And if it was, for example, in the middle of the door, this is where your door is going to rotate, so it would have a spinning type action more. And what I want it to be is right near the edge of the door here. And I can actually zero this out, in my case, and it looks like it's right on the edge of the door here. A little hard to see. It might need to be a little closer on the inside. We'll try it out and uh, see how that goes. So now that we've got the door physics set up, we've got the hinge on it, we've got the box collider, what we're going to need is the actual VRTK scripts to make this work. And there's a very easy way to set this up right now. And this may change in the future as the VRTK updates come out. We'll see how things go. But it'll probably stay a fairly similar process. I'm just going to choose Window and choose VRTK and choose Set Up Interactable Object. Now this will open up a tab for me that will allow me to set up this door quickly without having to manually add scripts because if you're going to set up a lot of uh, interactable objects it could take a long time. Now the touch highlight color is set to black but I'm going to change mine to red so when my controller touches the door it's going to change red. Next we want to make sure that that is the grabbable option is set so is grabbable should be checked off. I also want to set hold button to grab. That means that when I grab this with my controller and I let go with my controller, the door will let go right away. So we don't want to click onto the door and have it be stuck there, because for a door we're just going to grab it for a few seconds and let go. When we look at the use options, we want to make sure these are actually all off, because we're not using the door for anything, we're just grabbing it. Okay, all the other options here, let's see, we want to disable on idle, that's right, we don't want it to be doing anything when we're not touching it. I've already added a rigid body, so I'm going to turn that off. And I don't want any haptics, I don't want it to vibrate when I grab the door, so I'm going to turn that off. The last thing to set up is the grab attach mechanic. And now this is important that you choose the right one. And what we want is the rotator tract, because we want it to rotate open. So we're going to choose that. And the secondary grab, um, it's not going to make a big difference in this, I don't think, because I'm not going to use two controllers really, but we're going to have a swap controller to set up the default. Then we just choose set up selected objects and then we can close this window and as you can see it's added the necessary scripts. And let's just have a quick look through this and make sure everything's the way we want it to be. So this all looks good. So it, it is checked off hold button to use. We can turn that off. It's not necessary. And we do want to turn on one thing here. I'm going to turn on precision grab and it says if this is checked then when the controller grabs the object, it will grab it with precision and pick it up at a particular point on the object where the controller is touching. So let's turn that on. Okay, we don't need any other multipliers or delays or velocity limits or anything else like that. So this looks good. So let's save this and I'm going to jump in and we're going to try and open this up and see how it goes. Now you can see that my door opens and closes fairly well. The one thing that bothers me about this is that the door opens and closes all the way, both all the way open and all the way closed. And if you are um, maybe at a department store or something else like that, your door can open and close all the way and it would be fine. But we're in a house, we just want it to open that 90 degrees in one direction. And so what we can do is go over to the um, hinge joint itself. And we're going to use a limit on the hinge joint. So we have to click Use Limit, and I'm going to set the maximum to 90 degrees. So now what this is going to do is the door is going to only open towards me 90, 90 degrees. It won't, uh, when I close it, it'll just close flat and won't swing outwards. So that's how a door at home normally works. I'm not going to jump in and show that to you because I know it works, so you can go ahead and try it yourself. But that is basically how you set up a door for Unity using Steam VR and the VR Toolkit. Of course, along with your hinge joint, your rigid body, and your box collider. You got all of those together, you can have this nice uh, swinging opening and closing door. And that's it. This is Eric at Dumb Game Dev. And come check us out here on YouTube for some more videos on creating VR games in Unity for Steam VR.